Hello and welcome to this video which is entitled Philosophy and Music. Um, I've been giving a great deal of thought to where uh, this channel is going to go in 2022. So Happy New Year to you all. Here we are, a new year, which means new ideas, new events, new happenings, you know. So what I'm, what's my intentions? Well, um, how much longer can I go on talking about different jazz fusion artists and comparing albums? Uh, there's a finite amount of knowledge I have about music. You know, I don't know all the music in the world. Um, one of the things that's been really interesting is I've now created over 80 videos on this channel which now really talk about prog and jazz fusion and rock. There's probably more that I can talk about in terms of um, prog and uh, straight rock music and pop music and other forms of music, straight jazz. So I, I'm going to be venturing into wider realms generically on this channel. But for me personally, one of the things I really would like to do is for it to um, become a little bit more education. I think the whole intention of this channel is education. But um, in putting these videos out, I've attracted a certain number of people with similar interests in music. And I'd really like to talk to them about um, A, developing their listening skills, or be developing their actual music skills. I'm sure there's a, a lot of mu actual musicians on here that have come to this channel, you know, and I, I felt that that's where I want to go. Um, in doing that and going down that angle, the thing that we have to deal with is philosophy. Now, if you go back and look at my videos, every now and then you've been um, given a video to watch, which, and these videos haven't been as, a success, as successful, but, um, I produce videos that really explore what does music do, how do we know it's good, um, you know, um, how do we um, dis rate music and decide which is better than worse, all that, those questions have been asked over and over. Um, I've also discussed why the critics dislike jazz fusion and those videos have been far more successful even though, again, they are essentially philo philosophical. So, um, I'm not a philosopher, um, I'm not vastly well read when it comes to philosophy, but I have an interest in philosophy and it has informed me as a musician and as a music educator. Okay, so let's just define some terms before we carry on. Um, music and philosophy, right? So what's music? Well, music is an art form. And as I've said on this channel, I believe that art forms basically balance um, hedonism and perfectionism, so they're dealing, uh, they're dealing with the emotions and our feelings and they're dealing with us um, creating order, it's chaos and order. Uh, in, music is an art form which tends to be more successful when dealing with the emotional and hedonistic side as opposed to say literature which tends to deal more with the perfectionist side, you know, the um, what in art you may call form and content. Um, so, you know, painting you have would have the content, that's what the picture's about, and then the form is, is the actual way it works. You know, there's, there, there's this division um, within the arts which crops up over and over again. But I think the most useful way of thinking of art is a balance between hedonism and perfectionism feelings and um, emotions with, you know, order and things being all nailed and perfect. Um, philosophy, we can see as um, a respect for truth. It's, it's a way of working out what is true and what isn't true. And it explores different ways of approaching truth. Um, and I would really like to get on into that on these videos. That would be a real interesting area of discussion. It's also about an appreciation of beauty. Um, art, now this is a, a weird one because in philosophy, this often comes out in moral philosophy, ethical philosophy, and ethical philosophy is how we live a good life. You know, most philosophy is about that. It's about what is true and how do we deal a good life. For me, and this has come from my reading of philosophy, that I believe that the realm in which we de decide what is morally correct has its roots in the arts. So the arts is, are the areas in which we decide what is good and bad, what is right and wrong, okay? And that starts for me, right, 
with the idea that um, what we discern, decide is correct behaviour has its roots in the aesthetic in that it's a basically a human decision about what we think is good and not so good okay uh, so i'm i'm not coming from a sort of religious or spiritual angle i'm coming from a, a much more uh, logic based angle that the that, that morals have been evolved by human beings over millennia that those morals are really important they're concrete things but they're up for negotiation in the area in which we negotiate those moral values is the arts and that's why the arts are really important the area in which we um, work out truth would be science so science is a, a system which tries to uh, attain some sort of objectivities you know where we can uh, establish what what is true or not uh, philosophy is the overarching system which tries to wind those two things together you know to, to, to know what is true that, you know so when the science scientist is saying this true the philosopher comes go along and says but is it really true have you thought it through um, and it also then decides what is beautiful correct good right or wrong and then it tries to put those two things together um, through the um, history of human beings uh, that question has been asked over and over again and different philosophers have come up with different concepts and these concepts vie for each other you know and certain people have um, uh, an allegiance to a certain type of philosophy uh, and, and another will have an allegiance to another so for example you know in philosophy in terms of um, political organization you would have sort of the liberal idea of the individual that you need to correctly you know look after the individual's rights and freedoms against a sort of more marxist view of um classing the world in terms of privilege and uh, having measures which come from the state which which go against those liberal uh, individualist values to actually um you know create equity between those groups uh, and it's not just Marx I just picked him as a philosopher that would have come up with this there's, there's those those two ideas have always been there um, right from the beginning you know uh, right back to uh, Plato and his Republic which is an, a way of trying to organize those two things you know how, how much state control do you have against you know people's personal freedoms and how, how do those two things you know negotiate themselves you know again we can see that and you know we can move back a little bit and see that as again the negotiation between you know your personal freedoms you know my wants to do the things i want to do against the sort of grid the the order of the state coming in and saying no you can't do those things um and that's a negotiation you know most societies that have gone all the way over to state control you know like nazism and and stalinism and pol pot you know all those sort of or like North Korea today, all those um, uh, societies that, you know, use state control to try and create some form of equity. Um, when you go right over to that side, it's usually pretty horrendous. Uh, and societies where people are allowed to do exactly what they want. Well, has that ever existed? Have we ever had a society, society where, where people are allowed to be completely liberal? you know and acting in exactly the way they want you know without any state or government control uh, that's a that's an interesting philosophical philosophical question um but between those two things the negotiation between those two um i think we politically end up somewhere in between a, a, a most successful you know societies are somewhere they're not at each extreme they're somewhere on that scale my argument is those negotiations they really start within the arts as much as they start within the science and knowing what is true they also start with the arts these moral questions um these philosophical questions have a foot within um the arts and music so this is what informs me a lot in terms of my discussions and thoughts about music in terms of its value and worth and all these things it's, it's informed a lot of the thoughts on this channel now where's this come from for me personally well this comes from the sort of 
situation that I found myself in as a drummer when I was very young in having to make a living and uh, I can make a living by you know playing in bands and getting into better bands where I can earn more money um, but um, to do that fundamentally I need to know uh, which bands are good and which bands weren't so good you know I had to have an idea of what good was that's a philosophical question I really believe that the more you are able to discern what is good not your personal choice or taste of what is good but what is good objectively now um, there's people out there who will be going no oh, Andy you cannot say that there's no such thing as, as objective good now there we have philosophy rearing its head in the form of postmodern philosophers, people like Foucault and Derrida, um, which I'm not a big fan of, um, but these philosophers really believe that the 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 um, our ideas of good were socially constructed. They're entirely created by society, and they have no actual worth. There's no such thing as good or not good. What there is is basically um, there's power struggles that exist between certain entities you know there's no absolute good at all right that postmodernist idea now postmodernist philosophy which merged in the 1950s has really informed our culture now it's it's wound deeply into that culture and uh, most people i teach believe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder that you know that um there's no such thing as good as bad there is only your personal taste now that is a mixture of sort of postmodernist ideas with liberal ideas actually when you look at it um, but I've argued on this channel that um, there's a number of ways in which human beings decide what is good you know uh, um, in terms of art and music and if we add all those up we could sort of get some uh, objective ideas so those ideas would be you know yes your personal taste but also the personal taste of others if there's a lot of people liking something can we then objectively say well that's probably a better piece of art than the art that's just liked by one person then there's things like technical skill there's things like innovation there's things like cultural impact there's the idea of the story there's the idea of the emotions that are conveyed we can get parameters and parameters now i don't believe because i am a centrist essentially i don't believe that um either extremes are correct i don't think there's an object objective you know uh the classification of good and i don't believe it is completely subjective either you know if it was completely subjective a program like x factor or pop idol wouldn't work the reason it works is because people can watch it and sort of agree on what they think is good that's the whole point if that didn't exist that program wouldn't exist so it's not entirely subjective it's not con con entirely objective it's actually somewhere in the middle and that's what makes it really really interesting so as a musician i realized growing up that if i could get some objective idea of good you know of of of, of what is popular right or innovative right because those two things are always vying against each other you know um then I had more of a, had more of a chance of having some sort of success as a musician. Um, I became very aware that I was, as a drummer, was having to uh, uh, please the client, which is often the person who hired me. And my ability to play in 1916 or play inverted paradiddles at 260 BPM was not a concern of theirs. And I had to take that into account, that these postmodern ideas didn't work you know, in that situation, that there was some sort of objective reality unto which I could work, you know. And I became very interested in that. But at the same time, I had to make a living by teaching. People started to come to me and ask, you know, for me to teach them drums, and then I ended up teaching music in college. Um, I um, started to study educational theory you know, behaviourist theory, you know, cognitive ideas of, of learning, you know, humanist ideas of learning. Um, around about 2000, I had the revelation that re realising that the educational psychology was very good, it was very interesting and it was informative, but also we could look at education from a lot more scientific point of view and, and use cognitive science to study how we learn. And I became very interested in cognitive science and how that informed the way we learn music. Now, that's one of the things I would like to bring into this channel, 
is looking at the way the brain actually works and, and what's going on when you're trying to learn music, but also trying to marry that up with some of the educational theory. And the educational theory then relates over to philosophical ideas. Um, now, within the arts at the moment, I feel, as I've just said and tried to explain, that these postmodern ideas that emerged in the 50s, those ideas have worked their way into our arts education system. They were there in the 1980s when I was at college studying fine art, um, where we were, we were um, taught specifically postmodern ideas, um, constructionist and destructionist, structuralist ideas um, from postmodernism. Um, I found this stuff very, very interesting. Um, and I believe that there's um, aspects of postmodernism that is very interesting and it can be quite informative. But one of the issues I have with postmodernism is it lets certain other ideas in through the back door, you know. Um, and these ideas are often come from, firstly, religion, religious ideas, which where we really are dealing with an objective truth. Right. And, and also Marxist and socialist ideas. Um, now, I find it quite difficult to really get into, into these ideas. But, you know, Marxist ideas, um, socialist ideas, for me, um, have become overarching in terms of criticism of the arts. Um, that with a sort of objective religious view of the world, whether well, a postmodernist view, bearing in mind that all these three views contradict each other, I find those are really apparent within the way we think about music at the moment. And it's that that I really would like to start to discuss on this channel, you know, in terms of how music, you know, works how you get better at music and the future of music, you know, to try and undo some of these ideas that um, it, in the 1960s, these ideas were so important for the development of pop and rock music. So jazz, the innovation of jazz in the 1920s can be seen almost like a, a modernist movement. It's, it's a liberal movement, you know, um, Stanley Crouch, love him or hate him, the jazz critic, has said uh, um, that um, jazz is the embodiment of liberal democratic values, and I think that's the case. The way the jazz group works, and the thing I think I love about jazz, is the way that you are, it shows you how to operate as an individual, you know, without being demarked as part of a group, right? How to be an individual within the group, without becoming subservient to the group. That's the thing I think that I really love about jazz. Um, the 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 questioning of values and the the way that values create power structures which is really foucault right those ideas really inform rock music so rock music actually partly comes out just as an example of how this happens it partly comes out of educated young british on the whole um art students going back to um, American obscure blues artists and they're able to do that because these postmodern idea, modernist ideas have believed that the, 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 the established value needs to be questioned which I think is a really incredible thing that in itself is an incredible thing you know that, that, that there are voices that are, that are as valuable as the establishment voices and those voices are in the black community they're in the gay community, they're in, they're in um, the woman's community. These, the, the, these voices need to be heard. And I think this is one of the great achievements of rock music, you know, popular music, rock music, is it suddenly these voices are allowed to come through and we hear these different stories, right? But I believe that these ideas have now become ideologically dogmatic. And they've mixed with ideas from socialism, from Marxism, and they've also mixed with sort of ideas from religion, of obje objective truth, which really goes back to Plato, you know, and these, these sorts of platonic forms. These ideas 
are out there at the moment and they've really got a hold on the way we think about art. And it's very troublesome, it's difficult, um, which is why I'm stutching my way through this talk. It's difficult to talk about this because even questioning some of these values can be seen as really problematic. But I would like to do that on this channel um, without being triggering, but I would like to question some of these ideas that come from postmodernism, that, that come from sort of a re religious view of the world, that come from a sort of socialist view of the world and see how they have affected our appreciation of music and art. So that is my intention on this channel this year to some extent. Um, uh, if you're interested in these things, please like and subscribe because I probably won't do it if people don't find it interesting, but I would love to get into these discussions. You know, I've um, shown my cards on this video so you know where my stance is a little bit now, um, philosophically. Um, but if you're interested in this stuff, please like and subscribe. And um, hopefully we've seen a few more of these videos. Um, that's it. I'm going to stop there and I'll see you soon on the next video. Thank you very much.